Hello and welcome to the Inspire Life podcast. My name is Michael. I'm your producer and host. And today I'm really pumped to bring you an interview that I did with a friend of mine. His name is Ben Cody and he has been vegan for three years. And Ben and I have chatted on and off throughout his experience with veganism, mostly over Facebook Messenger. And he's going to share his story of why he switched this lifestyle, the substitutions and changes that he made to be successful with it. And most importantly, the health changes that he has noticed. Now, before we jump in, I just want to share there's a lot of evidence and more and more evidence coming out that show eating a plant-based diet has tremendous effects for health, especially cardiovascular health. And when we look at things like blood pressure and cholesterol and how these chronic conditions have kind of taken over American society, there's a lot of merit to at least trying out a plant-based or more plant-based diet than wherever we are at right now. So again, Ben's going to share some stats about um, what he's seen. We're going to talk a bit more too about the environmental and ethical impacts of a plant-based lifestyle. And with that, we'll let Ben take it away. Welcome to the Inspire Life podcast. This is Michael, your producer and co-host, even though at this point I'm basically just the only host because Dr. Mel has other things to do apparently. And today I'm super excited to have a friend of mine, Ben Cody here, and we're going to be talking about plant-based and vegan, not just eating, but essentially living. Ben has a pretty powerful story. I'm not going to go into it because he obviously tells his story best. And then we're just going to talk about, I guess, different topics when it comes to to being vegan and and living the plant-based lifestyle. And there's a lot of evidence to show that it really is really good, not just for our health, but for the health of the planet. But I'm going to, I'm going to stop rambling here. Ben, thanks for being on the show. Uh, Please, if you want to just start, introduce yourself, tell us a little bit about who you are and, and I guess your story on how you got on this path. Sure. Yeah. Thanks for having me, Michael. My name is Ben and my wife and I started our journey into plant-based living about three years ago. She came up to me one day as like a new year's resolution type thing. We love challenges. We love challenging ourselves. And she's like, we should try not eating meat for a month. I'm like, whoa, that's, that's a, that's a pretty big challenge, but you know, you do most of the cooking at her house. So I'll give it a try. <laughs> so we, uh, we tried it for a month and it was really hard at first. Like I was really craving. I was a huge meat eater. I was the type of guy in college, a burger every Friday wings on Wednesday, just really loved that type of food. So it was, it was hard. There was definitely some cravings after a month of doing it. I was like, wow, I feel, I feel pretty good. Let's, let's try it another month. And then, you know, another month became a year and now it's three years and and we're still on that, on that, on that ball. And we both absolutely love it. Um, And we've seen some really cool changes since, since doing it. Yeah. And then, I mean, a little bit of backstory. So uh, I actually know Ben from college and uh, when you said that like burger thing, I'm just imagining uh-huh. going to like Betty Joe's and Winona, <laughs> yeah. I used to cook at the ground round and I just like, you know, flipping burgers back there all the time. So yeah, making that, that lifestyle shift though. And what you mentioned too, and something that I hear from so many people who go even more plant-based, even if they don't go fully to vegan lifestyle, but even just vegetarian is you just, you feel better, right? Mm-hmm. Like that's like the first thing that people notice that I just, I feel better overall. So, you know, with that, tell me more, you know, what, what did you notice change? What were the, I guess, you know, it's been three years now. So if you yeah. can even think back to that time, but yeah, what did you notice? So I had some pretty young health issues at a young age. So I was a, a 23 year old kid who had high blood pressure. I had high cholesterol at that age and I know it runs in my family. So that was another reason why I I wanted to try this. I mean, my mom and dad have both been on medication for for that type of thing for a long time. And I didn't, you know, want to go down that path at 23 years old. So when we started trying that, we kept tracking those numbers. And after six months, they had gone down a little bit. I'm like, this is awesome. And then I didn't check them for about two years. And and the reason I reached out to you a few weeks ago is because I I did have another blood test just to see where everything was at. And my numbers were super good, like huge changes in in all the cholesterol numbers. My blood pressure is in a normal range, just some incredible positive impacts from just not eating meat. You know, it's, it's pretty cool. Yeah. That's, I mean, that's such a, a powerful thing that you shared too, right. Is recognizing at a young age, having those types of, of health conditions that can be chronic. And if we don't 
address them right away. And like you were saying, in a proactive way, in a way that you're just making lifestyle changes rather, because, you know, not saying anything's right or wrong with medication, but being young individuals, we really have a lot of power in changing our biometrics and the way that our body functions just through diet, right? Diet and exercise, but diet especially is such a big one. So, I mean, if you don't mind sharing, would you, I remember, I mean, you sent me a screenshot of your blood yeah. test. And I was like, dude, that's fucking amazing. Like just to be able to make those changes through food alone. Do you have some of those numbers? Like specifically, I know the cholesterol was a big one for you, triglycerides. And then you mentioned blood pressure too. Yeah. I'm just going to pull up the message I sent you just so I have it here in front of me. The biggest change for me, I had super high triglycerides. Mm-hmm. They were marked high at 282 at the age of 22, which is pretty concerning. Um, and now they're down to 175. So that's a drop of a hundred. I don't know what it's measured in, but that's a, that's a big yeah. drop. And my well, doctor just... followed up with me and she was just like, that's really, really impressive. Oh yeah. Uh, for our listeners too, your triglycerides, you generally want them to be under 200 and triglycerides are kind of just a, a different type of fatty of a lipid that's within our blood, right? Cause we have our cholesterol, right? Our HDL high density or low density. And then the triglycerides are the third one. So ideally we want to keep those below 200. So that's amazing that you were able to do that. Uh, yeah. What else? The other big one was the non HDL, HDL cholesterol. I was high. I was at 181 and now I'm at 141 in in a normal range, Mm -hmm. which is really cool. My LDL also went down from 125 to 106. Nice. And then cholesterol HDL is 38. So that was considered low. Mm -hmm. Um, And now it's at 43. So it went in the right direction. And then the other one cholesterol overall was 219, which is high. And now it's 184. So every single category that I had measured went in the right direction. Dude, that's, I mean, that's fantastic. And legitimately just giving up the animal based products, right? Meat, right. especially. I, I mean, I've always been an active guy, even in college, I, I played sports. I was a weightlifter. So I was fairly healthy from a, from an exercise standpoint, but still was struggling with, with those numbers. Yeah. Man, that's awesome. So you mentioned at the start a little bit about at at the beginning, it was a challenge, obviously. It helps, obviously, that uh, you had someone on board with you, which, you know, if anyone, if uh, for our listeners who have listened to the podcast and who know what Dr. Mel and I stand for, we're all about community and doing things together with other people that helps whatever change process we're trying to go through, whatever goals we're trying to accomplish, having someone there with you is going to make it so much easier, you know, to empathize with, but talk about some of those changes. I guess we can even go into like, what are the foods that you, you switch to and that you're eating on a regular basis? Cause I think a lot of our listeners, I mean, myself personally, I've, I've gone back and forth with vegetarian. I've been my, I my longest stint of being completely vegan, just food wise was like five weeks. Uh, and I go back and forth. I'm very mindful I mean, I still am a meat eater, but I'm very mindful of the amount and where I source it from. But tell me, you know, in your words, like what are, what are the foods and the changes that you made and a little bit more about that process? Yeah. And I'm glad you, you shared kind of the, the fluid moving back and forth. We haven't had meat in three years, but we have switched a little bit between veganism and vegetarianism just because we wanted to find something that was sustainable. I mean, being vegan, we felt the best we ever had. But it's also very challenging when you're going out to eat or when you're going to a wedding or you have a work lunch, things like that. There's butter Um, everywhere. (laughs) Yeah, true. And and we don't want to look into every single thing like that. I mean, um, just for us. So right now, the the place we're at is we're vegan at home. So all of our products at home are vegan. But when we're going out to eat or to like a wedding, we're vegetarian. And we just found that to be more sustainable. And we think we could do that forever. Nice. Um, So, man. Yeah. Some of the things we eat, I know too, you, you asked about, my wife's an amazing cook and she actually has an Instagram where she posts a lot of her, her recipes. She hasn't done it in a bit, but it's, it's called Mrs. Cody's kitchen. Okay. C-O-D-D-Y. I'm going to put that in the link here so yeah. you can follow. Cause can I also need out. to follow. <laughs> she needs to start posting again, but you can check out some of her old recipes. <laughs> we eat a, a lot of different bean type recipes, mm-hmm. big on garbanzo beans, black beans, brown beans, pinto beans. So we eat a lot of tacos, you know, we, nice. we make some tacos all the time with beans and salsa, some vegan cheese, lots of veggies. We fry up some fajita veggies. We eat a lot of stir fries. There's some pre-mixed bags you can get too that, that have stir fry at them. For, we're big fans of Costco and Trader Joe's. So load up on those. Costco. 
Hell yeah. <laughs> but yeah, we, we love our carbs too. We eat a lot of, you know, bagels and peanut butter in the morning, big on protein bars, but really just a lot of vegetables. Tofu, we're big fans of, and even some fake meat products we're a fan of um, in moderation. So Gotcha. Yeah. Uh, a couple of things. So to circle back to the first point you made there, talking about the fluidity when it comes to any type of diet that people are doing, any type of lifestyle eating, as I like to call it, it's so powerful that you mentioned, is this sustainable for the rest of our life? And having that vision from the start is going to make it so much easier, right? Because like, I have clients who are like, yeah, like I want to try keto. So my, anytime someone says they want to try a diet, I say, okay, can you do it for a day? And they say, yeah, oh, hell yeah. Can you do it for a week? I, I think so. Yeah. How about a month? Probably. How about a year? I don't know. Right. You're, you're already saying like, yeah, I can definitely do this for the rest of my life when it comes to being flexible and focusing on being vegan at home. And then outside of the home, another big point that I want to touch on that you said is like, you're not going to stress about it. Like you're not going to be going to a restaurant and like, researching like, oh my gosh, like this restaurant is, are they potentially going to be like some, like I said, butter or whatever type of animal product? You're like, Hey, I'm a human. I'm adaptable. I can intake this here and there, and I'm going to be completely fine. And I know where my values stand and I'm going to do what I do at home. And I'm also not going to stress about it. Right. Okay. Cause like, if we're so stressed out about what we're eating all the time, our body, when we're in a stressed out state, isn't ready to intake food and even digest it. So I wanted to touch on that because that's so important. And then what you mentioned as well, when it comes to the foods that you're eating, what I'm hearing is you're getting foods that have high in protein, right? When it comes to beans, you mentioned tofu, uh, also like lentils, other legumes are super high in protein. I, there's there's this argument that if you're going to go vegan, like you need to like find out like your protein. I'm like, man, there's so much protein out there. And then also too, like there's also the the argument that, oh, like what about you know, animal protein is like complete protein, right? But you can have rice and beans together and you're going to get all of the amino acids that you need from those two together, right? So like right. you can get complete protein from, from vegetables, from plants, no problem. And then uh, a lot of fiber as well, which, you know, we look at the American diet and males, men, we should be eating at least 30 grams of fiber a day, every single day. And if you're eating plant-based at least majority of the time, or just focusing on eating more plants, you're getting that fiber. And that I mean, fiber is probably in my mind, I think it's the most important nutrient to focus on because that's, there's so much evidence and research that shows that consuming adequate fiber is good for healthy aging, for retaining muscle mass. Yeah. Protein is important, but fiber is even more important. And then with that, I guess I kind of got a little sidetracked, but I just wanted to, I wanted to touch yeah. on the fact that you're getting a lot of protein and fiber and good foods and you're enjoying it. You're making delicious right. foods. So and then yeah, yeah go that, ahead. that was for sure my biggest concern too going into this. Like, mm -hmm. I love lifting weights. I play soccer a couple times a week. Morgan and I are both huge rock climbers now. Um, so we're really concerned about, you know, not supplementing enough protein or not getting enough protein. And that's, you know, people always ask, you know, where are you getting your protein? And we're like, look at all these things we're eating that, that are high in protein. Broccoli. <laughs> yeah, every, you know, every vegetable pretty much has as some form of protein. You have to eat a little bit more of it, but we also supplement protein shakes too on the days that we really, mm -hmm. you know, work out heavy. We have some plant-based protein and we're just really mindful of keeping track that we're getting enough of the, the vitamins that we might be missing out on. So, you know, vitamin B12, we take that with our now. multivitamin every day. The other one that I really researched is collagen. Yeah. Just because that's hard to get. Um, so I found just a vegan collagen booster to gotcha. help, you know, your body naturally produce more collagen and then protein shakes, big into different kinds of seeds, chia seeds, hemp seeds, mixing with smoothies, all that. And just trying to, trying to be mindful of what we're putting in our body. Yeah. And what I'm really hearing is that you guys didn't just say, all right, we're going to stop eating meat. Let's do this. Like maybe at the start, that's how it went, but you oh, have, for sure. Yeah. <laughs> you've done your due diligence and you know, like, okay, what do I need to supplement with? What do I, you know, how am I going to make sure that I'm still getting what I need? Right. Cause like you mentioned B12, that's also the other big one. Uh, we really only get that from animal products. However, we can also get it from dirt. So, I mean, vegans aren't eating dirt, <laughs> but I'm just saying there's different places where we can get it from. And you can find, again, vegan supplements to get all of those things that uh, you quote unquote might be missing out on. I didn't send you, um, I got all my vitamins checked too during that same blood test. And yeah, uh, B12 was perfectly in range. Iron was in range. So everything looked good on that standpoint too. 
And that's fantastic. I, I just love hearing that. And just you being able to t- take that step and uh, recognize it from the, like the start, like, Hey, I want to be healthy. And this is, I think this is what's going to do it. So uh, kind of shifting gears a little bit. Um, you've talked about how veganism, you know, everyone focuses on the food. Um, they don't often consider that it really has an impact on our planet and on our, our climate and on our culture and society. So if you could just talk, touch a little bit about what you've learned when it comes to veganism more as a, as a state of consciousness rather than just a diet, uh, I would love to hear your thoughts. Yeah, and I'm definitely not an expert when it comes to like environmental impacts or anything like that. Of course, I've watched you know the documentaries on Netflix that talk about it that yeah. are super compelling. Um, I haven't fact checked a lot of that information. For us, it was more the health, the health impact of it. But then the longer we've done it, it kind of becomes a moral thing for me as well. Like I feel really almost guilty about the thought of eating meat at this point. I know that sounds funny, but the longer we do it, it uh, it feels that way. And I, you know, my wife grew up on a beef farm. So her, she grew up in that, that atmosphere. Uh, my grandparents were dairy farmers. So it, it's in our past to, to have that. But I think as we progress as a society, there's more options that are available to us that are healthy that we can turn to without that mass farming production model. That's kind of my thoughts on that. The longer I do it, the, the less I think I will ever touch meat again. Yeah. Yeah. And I mean, just to kind of to touch a little bit what you were saying when it comes to that mass farming, right? Industrialized agriculture, uh, these animals are stressed out. And when we're consuming foods and animals that are stressed out, and it's not just animals, it's plants too, right? But when we are consuming, especially animals that are stressed out, we're intaking those stress hormones into our bodies. And that's going to make us more stressed out, right? Like, I mean, me personally, I'm not sure if you can remember back three years ago, but when I uh, eat more meat than I, than I want to, or more than I, than my body probably wants me to, uh, I literally feel it like in my shoulders and in my neck. Right. And that's, that's cortisol because my body is having a response to the hormones inside of the meat that I'm eating. If I'm eating meat, that's not raised more humanely and, and slaughtered in a way where they're not, you know, releasing adrenaline and cortisol right before they die. And that's a, a big problem with a lot of you know, I mean, you can look back and this information is from Dr. Mark Hyman, Ben, I'm not sure if you're familiar with him. He's basically a lifestyle medicine doctor. He's an MD, but turned to the lifestyle medicine path. And he has mentioned how omega-6 versus omega-3 profiles of beef from the 20s and 30s and 40s up until now, they've flipped. The animals back then weren't at nearly as stressed out and they had way, they were way higher in omega-3 fatty acids and lower in omega-6s. Uh, and they flipped, right? And the omega-3 fatty acids are what's going to help with our, our HDL. It's what's going to help our our body properly do the repair that it needs to do. And the omega-6 is the inflammatory fats, right? So now you're looking at beef and they have like a 10 to one profile of omega-6 to omega-3 fatty acids. And we're in, we're ingesting that. There's a direct correlation there when it comes to the types of foods that we're eating and the cholesterol, high blood pressure, all of that. And two, right, there's even evidence, the American College of Lifestyle Medicine has come out with evidence showing that it's not just beef, right? Everyone gives red meat a bad name because, I mean, there maybe is some validity to that. But even when it comes to like eating chicken, right, like there's carcinogens in chicken. All of the meat that we have nowadays, most of it at least, unless you're really getting it from like, you know, a small farm and you know how the animal was raised and what they were fed, it's really contributing to chronic disease. So just hearing you say like you you have compassion for the animals, right? And recognize that like they are conscious beings too. We need to be yeah. treating animals as conscious beings and not just as food. So uh, yeah, clearly yeah. I'm, I'm passionate about this topic. So right. <laughs> thank you. And- and I, I love it too. And, and I think Mr. Rogers said it best. I was a huge Mr. Rogers fan growing up and I just watched his, his movie a, a year ago and he said that he could never eat anything that has a mother. He, he said that in the movie. I'm like, wow. I mean, that, that, that says a lot. That's so powerful. I really like that phrase. It is powerful. Um, I'm going to write that down. Yeah. And he can, he talks about it in an interview. So you can check that out. Awesome. But for me, if there's other options available that I can just be just as healthy, if not healthier, I'd love to, to, to do that. And I think the farther we go, the more options there'll be. So I think being vegetarian and vegan is just going to keep getting easier and easier. Absolutely. Yeah. I mean, you look at the kind of the gluten movement that started, you know, when celiac was becoming really kind of prevalent and now we're seeing, you know, maybe the celiac is not quite the same as going vegan, but there's going to be more options. There's going to be more places like now, I think you can go to like, 
you know, I don't, I don't condone going to fast food restaurants, but you can go to like, I think like Burger King even has, has vegan options. Right. And like yeah. Taco Bell even. So oh. it's becoming more and more on the forefront. Like you said, it, when it comes to a health perspective for us as individuals and for our communities and for the planet, it's kind of the, the direction that we need to go. So Ben, time has flown. Um, that's definitely a good sign that this has been a fun interview. We're down to our last question. And for listeners, you guys all know that this is the final question. So Ben, uh, when it comes to whatever it is that you think is most important, what would you leave our listeners with? Or what's the most important thing that you want them to take away from this episode today? From the episode today, I think the thing that Morgan and I stress the most in our lives is doing something that's sustainable. You don't have to be perfect. Making those that choice every day to, to do something that you could do for the rest of your life it's the little things we do it each day that make the longest lasting impact. So just be mindful. Don't try to overdo it and just pick something that is sustainable and that works for you. Sustainability and start small. That's how we move pillars, right? So awesome. Well, thanks so much. If you want to share, I know that you're not necessarily in the health and wellness space, but if anyone wanted or want to get in touch with you or even the Instagram handles, right? How can people reach out to you via social media or whatever means that are best for you? Yeah, absolutely. I'm, I'm on LinkedIn, Ben Cody. Feel yep. free to follow me. I'm still in the hospitality industry. I know we met uh, kind of in the bar scene um, in college. Luckies. Lucky. <laughs> they used to manage a bar in Winona, but now I'm, I'm a corporate recruiter for hotels. Cool. So if you have, ever have questions about um, organized journey or just questions about hospitality or hotels, feel free for to sure. reach out. And yeah. then what was the Instagram handle again? Because I got to follow um, that too. Mrs. Cody's Kitchen. Gotcha. This is Cody's Kitchen and then Ben on LinkedIn. Man, it's been a, a fun episode. Keep it up. You, I know that this episode alone is going to inspire, it's, it's inspired me to go back towards more of a plant-based lifestyle. Uh, and I know you're going to inspire others. So that's what we got for today. For all the listeners, as always, thanks for tuning in. And until next time, keep inspiring. Thanks, Ben. Thank you, Michael. Thank you for tuning in to the Inspire Life podcast today. Don't forget to check out the Instagram, Mrs. Cody's Kitchen. I personally went on a scroll fest there and saw some awesome recipes, and I'm sure you'll get some ideas as well. Also, as with any episode, if you're curious to learn more about the information that we share, or if you ever just want to reach out and have ideas for future episodes, please do not hesitate to call me. My number is 651-760-0688. And lastly, don't forget to jump on over to Facebook and join the Inspired Living community. That's where Dr. Mel and I share all of our content and information to help you continue to live your most inspired and thriving life. And as always, until next time, keep inspiring.